All right, we are back on Morning Line. This is an interesting, fun show. Um, we're talking Tin Pans out, of course, uh, getting underway. Kyle Jacobs is with us, songwriter. He'll be performing at the Bluebird as part of that. It's going to be more, at least once uh, there. Or you have a couple of uh, performances? Uh, uh, for Tin Pan South, just the one. Okay, the one yeah. at the Bluebird. And we'll talk more about that. Bart Herbison, of course, also very involved with the festival with the uh, Songwriters Association. What's kind of fun is during the break, we... Uh, Talk about more Garth Brooks stories. Dude, you've got to run camera. <laughs> this is the new show. Like, yeah, that's sometimes not a good idea. No, Always remember these are you got all a mic clean on. stories, but no, they are. They are. Man. Nothing bad about this, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. all the stories about you like, are a riot. What? <laughs> you yeah. are a riot. Yeah. Man. You're one of the best storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, so let's, let, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The stories end up in your songs. Right? It, well, that's what songs are. Yeah, yeah it's songs just, you know, stories. Yeah, and it's, it. I, someone was telling me who was, you know, wanting to be a songwriter and all this. It was interesting. You talk about how, you know, some of your hits have come because of breakups and, and women and things like mm -hmm. this, which yeah. it's like when life was going well for him, his well of creativity dried up but when it was a breakup and there was drama he was a just you know it just came out of him do you find that I, I, again I know everyone's different but it just seems like when things were smooth as silk and things were happy yeah he, he, he had writer's block but yeah. when he's down and just you know the breakup or maybe he, things aren't going well talking about you or? No, I don't know <laughs> no, who he's talking about is that not typical maybe well no? let me tell you uh, so when you are a professional songwriter okay okay so I've been um, doing it for 15 years ish yeah and um, about 1800 songs in so you get um, a little depleted creatively right sure. all right so if you have a right the next day you're like okay all right I gotta I gotta go do my song gotta go write, gotta show up I don't think I have anything I don't know what I'm gonna write about da, 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 da. so you sit there and you meet this new guy this new girl and um, <coughs> And you just kind of, songwriting is very intimate. Mm -hmm. it's, it just immediately turns into an intimate situation because the best songs come from honesty. Okay. They come from real life, right? So if you're depleted and you show up into a room and it's just like, hey, how are you doing? And uh, he or she says, well, I just broke up with my boyfriend or girlfriend last night. The other guy, the songwriter is like, Yes! <laughs> this is great. That's what I thought. <laughs> this is great. We, we actually have something to write about. <laughs> but something that's real. Yeah. And it's not to be mean or anything like that, but it's just, it's like, okay, we actually have something to draw from. Now. Yep. And that makes you know. sense. Yeah. There's the emotional yeah. vein there. Yeah. And that's, that's where the best songs come from. I mean, you can write the fun songs, but even some of the, the fun songs are very real songs. You, you know, know, one thing I've always kind of wondered, and again, this may be a stupid question from someone who couldn't write songs like you in a million years, but it's like, think of all the millions of songs mm -hmm. that have been written in history of any genre. Millions. And I just wonder, you know, all right, we keep coming up with new songs. When you write one, though, the, the concern that maybe something comes out that's already been done, how do you know if something you came out that truly was an original creation of your mind? Yeah. What if that comes out and then all of a sudden someone says, well, you know what? There's another song already out there that's got that same melody. Or is, I mean, I'm just wondering, does that ever well, happen? And meaning that, not that you're, you're stealing it, you genuinely came up with it on your own. We can but both with answer. All that. the millions yeah. out there, it's yeah. bound to maybe have a similarity to some other songs. And how do you walk sure. that line? Sure. That's, um, it's, you have to be careful with it. I get very convicted about that. If I feel like a melody that came out of my mind, um, is on top of another melody. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe you heard that years ago on the radio and it caught you, I know. and you didn't realize it, and then sure. you forgot it, and then some other year it comes up, and then all of a sudden you realize, uh-oh. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard because, um, yeah, you've heard so much, you've heard so many songs, you've listened to so many songs, <laughs> and it's like, uh, all right, is this melody this or this melody that? Yeah. And um, for me, it's I cannot release something if I feel like it's already been created. Sure. I cannot. I understand. I mean, I and guess yeah, my heart yeah. can't and my, my head can't. Does that come up sometimes? Yes. I would imagine. Absolutely. From, what, Absolutely. What do you think well, on that? Because then there's, there that, can be, you've seen lawsuits in the past. a very terrifying topic in our yeah. industry right now. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to hit this on a couple different fronts. I find professional songwriters, if you've done this for a while, you just kind of get a feeling. You're like, are yeah. we on something yeah. here? Yeah. Okay. And you yeah. check it out. I think there's apps where you can even check it out now. But look, hmm. Nick. Very rarely is there a completely original song anymore. Okay. Yeah. Three chords That's and the truth right. and your lyric That's and the titles. Thing. Sure. So 
So, so I think the courts, I don't think this, I know this, look at a, several different things. Okay. They look at access, even if there was another song, especially if it's a song that wasn't a huge popular song. Mm -hmm. Did he hear it? Probably not, right. mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then they look right. at intent, and they look at musical similarity. You may have a riff that sounds like a riff in another song, or even a line, but you know, I don't think that's enough. You have to, to look at to it as a whole. You have to look at it as a whole. Having that's said that, good points, there yeah. have been a couple of court cases lately that freak us out. Okay. This Blurred Lines case mm -hmm. essentially was a groove. And now you can sue over a groove? Mm. That's tricky, dangerous territory. Look, I'm not defending anyone that, that commits copyright infringement. You should be punished mm -hmm. to the fullest extent of the law. It's such a problem that NSAI created copyright infringement insurance for songwriters. We created a big group policy because he gets sued and a cottage industry sort of ensued. The rules are not in our favor. I can lie. I can claim that he stole my song. Mm -hmm. Then all of it is on Kyle. Mm. I don't have to prove any of that access similarity mm. up until the trial. Uh, and so he starts so getting for a and you're going into yeah. US District Court. I saw one case that was a million dollars mm. before they ever went to court of answer this, were yeah. you here, yeah. did you do this? The only people so, getting rich there are the lawyers. So it's a genuine yeah. concern and problem yeah, in our very much is. I suppose, that, what would you do, Kyle, if um, someone did that with a song and they recognized it and they yeah. thought, well, that sounds like something that I know he penned or something, and they called you and they said, look, we have this song and we genuinely wrote it our own, but we noticed there's similarities. We'd like to reach out to you. Is it okay if we do this, if we, Cut you in, or like a, how would that work? Well, if like they, if a, they a fellow it. songwriter friend, yeah, or something yeah. like that. I, I'm just curious how yeah. you might um, handle that. Honestly, um, I've that's happened to me before. How, so what did they yeah. do? They called and said, "Look, we think we've got a riff here similar to something you've done." Or yeah, well, what's uh, beautiful about Nashville and Nashville songwriters is that um, we're a family, and we okay. appreciate and um, just we are so supportive of everyone's successes. And so if someone, if a buddy of mine said, bro, I, this melody sounds kind of similar to what you did with this song, da 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 for me, honestly, I'd be like, hey, go, great, that's okay. fine. Yeah. And, and actually, it's kind of an honor that, yeah. that you are, you know, you heard a melody of mine and, and, it's, and it's kind of similar. Yeah. And, okay. um, and you know, because we, we celebrate each other's successes, mm -hmm. generally in the family of Nashville. And there's an honesty there. It was not intentional. Yeah. It's one thing if you think someone's intentionally yeah. ripping you off, yeah. then that's exactly. going to be a different ballgame. Exactly. But that's that, totally different ballgame. But you're saying in this community, and that's something we should talk about, it, it's it's kind of a family thing. And it always it has, going all the way back, Chris Christopherson and others here doing their thing. It seems like it's always, in so much of this industry, there's competition and and not necessarily music, but in any kind of competitive field, and they're after back. It's not like that with the music I've songwriters. I've never seen a profession ever, and I'm old. Okay. I've been around. Okay. Where Kyle is going to sort of teach the up and coming kid how to maybe take his place. That's one way of looking at yeah. it. But the other way of looking at it is what Kyle said. Mm. It's supportive. It's embracing. It's nurturing, and it's a gift. And I've I am so happy to be the director of the Songwriters Association for no other reason than that. This is what we do. Yes, sir. Well, open especially the arms. Especially considering you were in politics. Well, I worked in politics. Didn't you I work? wasn't politics. For, I know. I worked but for you were for Clement. Did, did yeah. you work for Clement? Yeah. yeah. yeah and sure so did. I mean, well, I'm just saying there's not a more cutthroat industry or field yeah, yeah. than politics sure. these days, as you well know. And there's so no more songwriter. political industry than the music business. Yeah, so true. <laughs> well, that's, that's exactly true. right. The politics but the, of it. But on the ground with the creators, like you especially in Nashville, you Garth Brooks we talked about. Yes. The guy's unbelievable. Hmm. I mean, how he approaches. I, we had an event with Garth one time, and we literally had to pay a little extra for the venue because he wanted to shake every person's mm -hmm. hand that was there. It is an embracing culture, and I think it's just yeah. a reflection of Nashville. Do you remember years ago when Fanfare was at the Speedway? I remember it well. And Garth, just without telling anyone, <laughs> showed up and set up in the pig pen back there or <laughs> of whatever. Of course he did. And he had a line going all the way, or literally around mm -hmm. the Speedway, to meet. And he met. He was there for I think 24 straight every hours. Every person. And, and how you cool know, is that? It was yeah. And just, just that's just neat. Well, Fanfare too, and that's where country. Could you yeah. imagine a Fanfare for rock and roll? 
I don't know if something like that exists, yeah, but no, it wouldn't no, work. No. Fanfare <laughs> with country works because yeah, of the artists yeah, and does. and the fans and the songwriters. I mean, and the, the songwriters, songwriters yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, someone like that that shows up. It just uh, you know the Nashville is special. How do you com compare Nashville to what's going on in Austin, Texas? Well, hmm. one of the sad things that happened in the advent of piracy in the digital era, we had. 10 or 12 viable music industry cities. Hmm. There was Austin, there was Chicago, there was Muscle Shoals, Nashville, New York, LA, Detroit. The whole industry's kind of in two towns, right. now, especially the creative part, which is Los Angeles and Nashville. New York still has record labels and publishers there, but it's different there. It's more of a yeah. <clears throat> service station uh, okay. type thing. I'm not saying creativity never happens, but if you want to reach for the brass ring and sort of succeed at the top of this, you come to Nashville or New York. And Nashville has got every publisher and every record label has talent scouts in all genres. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so that is... And so like Kyle, he works in, in multiple genres. So at one time, so you're saying it's kind of died out in places like it's, Austin. Well, Austin has no more record labels. BMI, yeah, thank just them, just opened up the first real music office down there. Their governor, Greg Abbott, has called us. Mm -hmm. We've been down there several times. I got a guy named Brendan Anthony that needs some props. They are trying to bring the business back. It became live shows. Mm -hmm. All you could really do was play clubs down there. But, yeah. but hopefully, with some of the things that have happened with legislation and advocacy and sort of a little bit of a resurgence, we'll see some of that come back. Yeah, because there's which so would be great good, because yeah. the talent down there is it's incredible. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Do you write with your wife or for your I know you've written for your wife, have you not? Yes. Okay. So yeah. is that, I'm just wondering, there's got to be a different dynamic there, isn't there, or no? Is it the same? Uh, yeah. Who is your wife, and uh, is she... Writing with Kelly Pickler, <laughs> or Kelly Jacobs, um, is, um, that's, uh, that's one of my favorite parts of our marriage. Okay. Um, she speaks in song titles, uh. and um, her heart is just this beautiful unbelievable conquering heart and um, and there's just so much stuff to write about yeah and um, I'm very happy to say that um, one of our dreams has come true we just got a Steinway piano oh. and um, so I love just sitting down at the piano and just playing for her yeah. and she'll start singing a melody and all of a sudden this idea will come out and um, it's one of the most beautiful parts of our marriage. That's a, it's something you can do together and you really enjoy it. Yeah. And you talk about it being intimate and you know the intimacy yeah. between a husband and a wife is a big deal. Yeah. There's it, all kinds of things huge. you can draw and on. Even if it's not just for work, even if it's just to sing mm -hmm. and just to, just, to have, just to share that moment together. Actually when she's on the road or she's working, the thing I miss most about my wife is her singing in the kitchen. <laughs> Because she sings all the time. I think a lot of husbands would say that about yeah. their wives if they yeah. like to mm -hmm. sing, and you miss that. Yeah. I wonder, are there that many husband-wife tandems like what you do? I mean, you know, you, as a songwriter and, you know, um, a wife who's a performer? Yeah, I mean, there's a few. I, mean, I know of a lot of songwriters yeah. that became couples because, look, co-writing is something you do when you have to write 1,800 songs yeah. over your career. Right. And I, I want to say this. It's a business. People think, oh, that'd be easy, mm. just riding around, doing whatever, and write a song. They show up in a room every morning. They have their calendar booked out for months. They sit down and they they work through this. Schedule, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's like writing a newspaper column okay. every day. It's a volume exercise. <coughs> 1,800, did you say you've written? Yeah, yeah, and we ish, probably yeah. 18 really were commercial successes or maybe more, mm -hmm. but it's a volume exercise. Yeah. But we say it's like dating. And we have a conference during Tin Pan South. We have about 300 aspiring writers from all over the world here. And the one topic that we always get the, what about co-writing? What do I do? How do I find them? How'd you get a date? Uh, right. <laughs> it's trial and error. I mean, it's, you find someone, it's you say, Let's very get much like that. Yeah. Interesting. That's very yeah. Very finding a date, yeah. So, but yeah, everyone's looking for a co-writer because sometimes you need someone to just bounce it off. And of even if two guy friends are writing, I mean, you have to find a way to pull all the layers and the bull back and get down to right here. Uh -huh. to the nitty -gritty. And that's why friends typically end up in the ones you come up with having the most success together right. long term. Let's take a break on that note. Back our final segment with our guests. What an interesting conversation. More as of course Tin Pan South Festival underway. We'll be back after this. It's finally getting hot.